Let's take a look at a few examples where RAID has saved me time by helping me solve real-world software engineering tasks. So I'm currently in the middle of building a startup called Ficti. Ficti has a very complex monorepo code base. And for part of it, we have our infrastructure defined as code. Within that section of the code base, we have a configuration to run an inference server called Tabby API. Now I haven't worked on this part of the code base in a while, so I needed a refresher on how it's designed and how it works. So to help me get back up to speed on this part of the code base, I fired up RAID and I asked it to help me understand how our Tabby API inference server configuration works. I ran RAID from the root of our mono repo. This mono repo includes our API code, our front end, our back end, and our infrastructure code. RAID began to analyze the code base and it jumped right into the infrastructure section of the mono repo. It ran multiple searches on the code base and it was able to find the specific relevant files and read those files. After reading and analyzing those files, it was able to create a research report that included all of the details about how this part of the code base works. It included information about our Docker build, our Kubernetes configuration, and the Tabby configuration itself. This is exactly what I needed in order to get back up to speed with this part of the code base. It felt a lot like having a competent coworker who was already an expert in that section of the code, and I could just ask them to get me up to speed. But in this case, it was a fully autonomous AI coding tool. Now, one really cool thing about RAID is that this research report is not ephemeral. It actually is stored in the memory of the agent. So when I give RAID additional queries, it can refer back to this research that it already has performed. This makes the agent more and more efficient the more that you use it. And it gets to know all of the ins and outs of your code base, just like a real software engineer would. And one really cool thing that RAID does is that when the memory starts to get really full, it goes back and it analyzes which information it can get rid of. This prevents the memory from getting too clogged up over time. So now that I was back up to speed on how our inference infrastructure worked, I wanted to make a change. Specifically, I wanted to introduce priority classes. This would allow us to have lower priority background jobs that are running expensive inference, and those could be preempted by higher priority tasks that are directly serving users. Now, I wasn't fully decided on how I wanted this to be incorporated into the code base. So in my RAID prompt, I explained what I wanted to get done, and I asked it to analyze the code and analyze the structure and organization of the code base and find the best way to incorporate this change into our existing code. Once again, RAID did a very efficient but thorough analysis of the code base, as well as its organization and structure, just like I asked. So now we had a very good understanding of what change we wanted to make to the code base. I prompted RAID again, but this time I asked it to actually implement the change. Its assignment was to integrate priority classes into our Kubernetes infrastructure code. Like I mentioned before, all of that prior research was already embedded in the memory of RAID. So RAID very quickly identified the exact files that would need changes, and it made those changes. You'll notice here that RAID went into a planning stage, and it did this change as a task. If we give RAID more complex assignments, it'll actually break those down into multiple tasks. So RAID was able to successfully make this change on our complex monorepo project on the first try. So at this point, we actually committed those changes to our code base, and we deployed this into our production cluster. For a fast-growing startup with a small team, being able to ship changes into production this quickly is a real game changer. We're able to ship multiple changes and features into production in one day, which otherwise might take multiple days or weeks. So now that the changes were shipped into our production cluster, I wanted to take a look at the state of the cluster itself. For this, I ran RAID on the command line. So I asked RAID to use cube control and analyze the resources that exist in our Ficti test namespace. I asked it to look for things related to auto scaling and priority classes. RAID asked me for approval to run its first cube control command. Now I wanted RAID to complete this analysis without interruption, so I went ahead and enabled cowboy mode. This is totally optional, but it gives the agent more autonomy. Now, one really cool thing about RAID is that it has really good integration with terminal commands. Many other coding agents out there right now don't have this kind of integration with the terminal. They either don't support it at all, or they integrate with another terminal in VS Code, and it's really clunky, and it doesn't always work. But RAID actually emulates a terminal so that it can both pass through the interactive commands to the user, as well as capture the output for the LOM. So RAID continued to run commands and it did the analysis that I asked for. It was able to identify the auto scaling resources and show how priority classes were integrated into the cluster. So overall, RAID took a process that would take multiple hours or possibly a few days, and it allowed me to complete it in about 20 minutes. 
it quickly got me up to speed with code that I wasn't already familiar with, and then it helped me make a relevant and valuable change to the code base. We were then able to ship this change to the production, and now it's helping us make money. Now there are a lot of other AI coding tools out there. If you're wondering why you would use RAID over all of the alternatives, I recommend checking out my other video which goes into the reasons why you should use RAID.